like to get back on the road again. Am I back again? Dude, like throw the back in. Back home again. Back home again. In. 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 land. All right, everyone, welcome again to another episode of Dirt Yard Dish, this being the fourth episode of our fourth season. I'm your host, Rudy Lyon. My co-host alongside me is Dirt Yard Dish newcomer, Alex Gerchiff. How are we doing tonight, Alex? What up? Fantastic. Just got, you know, off of a crushing volleyball loss. But, you know, we're here. We're here, well, and it's only going to get better. What was the set score? Was it 3-0? Did you get swept? 2-1. Uh, we really blew it in the third set. We had a chance, but okay. Yep, couldn't put it together. CCA, you're rocking the CCA shirt. Yeah, yeah, yep. okay, Very cool. Everyone's favorite non Circle City Wiffle. Circle yes. City the CCW, one rung of excellence above CCA, yep. all Circle City here in this podcast. So today, in this podcast, as I kind of teased it there, we're going to be recapping week one of the hot, hot, hot stove. Uh, from free free agent February, first ever week of free agency went off with a bang. Uh, my team, the Yackers, has yet to announce uh, any signings, but all other teams have done so. Uh, we I will have some announcements for that later in the show uh, as we get uh, down to the nitty gritty of this episode. Uh, but how about this? Since you are a newcomer to the podcast, why don't you just give uh, a little introduction uh, of who you are, like your background in life, your experience with Wiffle, how you got into the league. I know I'll just lead in with this. You were the second overall pick in the 2021 rookie draft right behind Aiden Palmer and made uh, a living for yourself in the Hackers lineup and were probably top three rookie last year. Yeah, appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I was uh, led on to CCW by a friend of mine who knows I've like, you know, watched the, the Wiffle leagues on YouTube and stuff and like, man, would love to play in a league like this. Um, and a buddy of mine was like, Hey, do you know that Indy has one of these? Right. So yeah, just moved up to Indy um, shortly before the season last year and showed up to the tryout. And I'm like, dude, this is sick. I'm all in. Um, yeah. This is my first time playing Wiffle ball in any sort of like competitive um, format. Of course, like every, baseball loving kid like every day at every opportunity uh growing up we'd be playing wiffle ball in the backyard even like you know up until high school and college right I'd bring the ball in the bat with me and try and get buddies to play with me so um yeah I I'm from Indiana um spent the last 10 years or so of my life in Bloomington up until again like a year and a half ago when we moved up to Indy um yeah loved playing uh in you know the league rookie year and and it's like to stick with the league yeah so what was that rookie year like I mean obviously you get that first time stepping into the dirt yard for that trial was probably <laughs> mind-blowing but what about like the level of competition dude it was nuts yeah and I um yeah super thankful that I like got a chance to break into the league on um a team like the hackers right where you know despite our flaws which <laughs> the 2020 hackers had a few um great group of guys you know um plenty of opportunity mm -hmm. i think that this was a thing that i was nervous about joining the league right it's like what if i get picked up by a team that's just full up you mm -hmm. know and if i was picked by the moonshots right i don't get a net bat net last year right but mm -hmm. i'm grateful that i got a chance to play every game um that i was able to it was a ton of fun. The guys are at the in the league are super welcoming and um, patient, you know, as you get your feet underneath you. So, yeah, it was a, an awesome experience. Um, I've like tried to hype this up for as many like friends of mine as I can, because I think it's yeah just such a cool opportunity, you know, yeah. to play in this league. Yeah, the, the 2021 Hackers were seriously like first team all vibe. Uh, <laughs> for sure, because you guys, I mean, yeah. if you're talking Stark. Uh, yourself, uh, Buck, Buck, Cade, man, all you guys just meshed so well, and you competed as well. Like you, you beat yeah. some of the best teams. Won, uh, a playoff you game. won a playoff game. Yep, for the second straight year, the Hackers uh, won a playoff game, which yeah, you know, they've normally been near the the bottom half, but uh, definitely took a step in the right direction. And you know, we're sad uh, to see the Hackers go by the wayside this year. There will be an archived franchise, and if we do grow to a point where we need more 
more uh, teams within our six team league, maybe move up to eight, possibly 10 in the future as popularity gains. Um, but uh, yeah, we're excited that you got into the league. You've been a great fit. We know like your skills and expertise with media sure. is going to be helping with our podcasting game like today and with our streaming, especially as we go to the next level on Twitch. Yeah. Um, but that's, like, uh, that's such another plus to it too, right? Is yeah. like, as you've got, you know, friends and family from out of town, it's like, obviously can't make it to the games in person, but it's like, dude, right. stream every game. Here it is, right? Like tune in. Um, yeah, it, it, yeah, a lot of fun. Just watch us from afar and see how nerdy we are. Just right. full-grown full 30-year-old men playing. I, I will say, I, I failed to mention this, but in my first, um, the first game that I played at the Dirt Yard, in 2021 was against the the noodlers and i do believe the first pitches that i saw in my wiffle ball career were against d caleb yonkman <laughs> which is a real brutal way oh, man. to start it's like damn does everybody <laughs> is this everyone right, right. That's thankfully it's not uh, but it was a tough tough start yeah no i remember in uh that i think it was the the opening tournament maybe your first career hit was off of me. I hung a one, two curveball to you. You put it off the, the top trim, the yellow yep. trim in right center and almost won the game. I know, man. And I had to hold my breath there for a second, but you just broke missed. that ball. That ball was like four feet off the ground the whole way too. It was a missile. Yeah. Well, anyway, I know we've, we've talked hackers. We talked about what you're going to be uh, bringing to uh, CCW now kind of as a more involved role now that you've got your rookie year underneath you. But you do have a decision to make on uh, where you want to land and so um, with, with this free agency. And so have you had any developments uh, in free agency so far this month? Yeah, you know, uh, breaking news here on Dirt Yard Dish. Uh, I'm ready to announce my free agency decision. Um, yes, was uh, lucky to have a few options um, here in this first round, which is, you know, just so humbled, right, at the opportunity for all these great franchises. Any any of them would be an excellent fit. Thank you to all of the coaches and the scouts who, um, you know, put their effort and time um, into recruiting me. But I am psyched to um, unveil that I will be dropping the H and adding a Y, going from hacker to yacker. Yes, sir. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. All right. Yeah, I'm so, I, I, the combination of you and Cade, like you were saying, like got to play with Cade last year, a great guy, um, hits the snot out of the ball. Um, I think it's like such a, a great building block for a team. Um, and yeah, between you and Cade, two dudes that I am looking forward to hanging out with all year too. Um, I'm hoping the Yackers will be the all vibes team. of Yes, that, that's what we're rolling for. All vibes and, you know, Throwing a, a few dubs in there, maybe right. double-digit wins this year. I know the Yakers have been a little bit lean these last couple of years. Uh, we made it to the Dirt Yard Classic in 2019, came up short against the eight balls. Um, and then it's it's been a couple of under 500 seasons the last two years. But we're looking to get back on top and using free agency and your addition to catapult us that way. So I'm excited, man. I was pumped to go through that process with you. And I know you truly were sought after by many teams and were a primary focus. And so I think you're going to bring, like you said, you're a grinder, you're going to work hard. You've, I, I already know your velocity is up when pitching. Um, you're going to be a great hitter. And dude, you hit the crap out of the ball in slow pitch. Like at <laughs> the Indy tournament and um, at the All-Star game, you put on a show, my guy. So I'm excited to see you do that in the regular season in June. So, all right, yeah. we got our first official Yacker signing. Book it right there. The sixth and final team to add their third member. Uh, from here on out in this pod, we're going to be doing some power rankings and um, picking up on some surprises that we saw of the five signings, other than Alex, because now that he's officially a Yacker, we don't want him to be tempted to pick himself. And <laughs> I would be biased in that way, too. So how about I hit you with this question first, Alex? Which of those five week one signings was the biggest surprise to you to land as a week one? Because generally a week one, you kind of think this is going to be a high value guy. Maybe he's a he's a two-way player. 
Um, but it wasn't the case. We had a couple of uh, lower uh, lower risk players, lower value players. Not that they're that makes them less valuable. Right. We all need pieces. We all have to stay under the cap. Um, yeah. Just yeah, hit me. Who was your biggest surprise? Yeah, it, like you said, the name of the game here, especially early on, has got to be like getting bang for your buck, right? Like it's not the worst idea to get somebody with a lower cap value if they're gonna you expect outperform that or really fill the slot that the team needs, right? So, mm-hmm. would you think it'd be good, Rudy, to go through the each who each team signed in week one in case? Yeah, I'll, I'll list them off. So uh, we had uh, Blake Voris, who re-signed with the Moonshots. No surprise there. The former manager, uh, he slotted right in there perfectly. Going to keep that establishment of uh, the Moonshot core with Gregory and Smitty. Dustin Dowden, former Yacker veteran with me. It was sad to see him go. He was He's going to be a valuable two-way guy, and I'm excited to see him move on to the Hounds. Um, see what he can do, especially after recovering from uh, labor and surgery. Now that he's a full year removed, we really didn't want to push him last year. Uh, John Duran uh, signed with the eight balls, another former Yacker. So we got Yackers going off the board in week one. Apparently, uh, I'm just a minor league system. I'm building up these guys just to find elsewhere. You just uh, get value out of them. Yeah, exactly. Change of scenery. <laughs> and then uh, Michael Plord signed with the Shorts, uh, the one-time Defensive Player of the Year, and then Tyler Punt re-signed with the Pork Pistols as well. Awesome. So who's, who's your most surprising of those five? Yeah, I think uh, Plord to the Shorts is really interesting and surprising to me. I think that in my, um, you know, experience in free agency, of course, like as you have people courting you, they're kind of saying, hey, we're thinking these guys, we're thinking these guys. Um, and I heard the name Plord dropped by, I think, every person that I talked to. Wow. Um, and so it's, yeah, um, one of the teams that I didn't talk to was the Shorts. And so I was not expecting him hmm. to land with them. Um, also, having only played in 2021, right? Uh, Plord wasn't a huge impact player last year. He wasn't super present at the Dirt Yard. And so I haven't seen, I, I know the accolades of the defensive player in the year, right? Hmm. Obviously, he's skilled um and sought after but haven't seen it for myself so much as some of these other guys so um interesting to see yeah. him go off the board here um in round one for me here sure. well hey I, i'm just gonna speak up for plord as we all know okay. he's a golden hands winner defensive player of the year whatever he did maybe you forgot he did throw a perfect game last year did he uh, really he, did. he stepped on the mound for the pistols and he threw a perfecto against i can't maybe it was the noodlers i don't know he went four wow. in it and struck out a ton of guys and didn't give up a hit or a walk. So yeah, there you go. Who knows? Maybe, maybe he's got more in the tank. And I know now that he's a short, uh, Brendan and Plord, they have their fun little rivalry uh, on the mound and at the plate. And now we're not going to get to see that, but um, may, maybe that was, that was a uh, due to his big ideas. Like, Hey, I don't want this guy striking me out anymore. It's exactly. embarrassing. Yeah. yeah. That's a, that's, I think that's a good pick. Uh, surprising. Yeah. I, I reached out to Plord, uh, thought we, we could have a need for some defensive help and heck, if he can throw a, perf- a perfect game and be an additional arm in the bullpen, that never hurts because pitching depth is huge in this league and in all Wiffle leagues. My pick, as I kind of mentioned him before, uh, John Duran, like I, I immediately texted him and congratulated him when I saw the post from the eight ball saying that he uh, was going to be signed there. And this is, this is a, a vet minimum guy. Mm-hmm. He is $10 bottom of the barrel, low risk, but could have immense uh, turnout yeah. uh, outplaying his value, especially with the pitcher whisperer and Mike speak senior. So yeah. he's got two guys in his arsenal now uh, and now Taylor Carpenter, uh, no longer DeHart, Taylor Carpenter uh, and John Duran, that he is going to groom up into probably ace quality pitchers. And John has just a flamethrower of a right arm. Yeah. Has some control issues. He's still, I tried to get him some innings last year to get comfortable. Um, if he gets on the board and he throttles down to even 80%, he's still going to be faster than most guys in the league. Um, but I thought, you know, I hadn't reached out to him yet because I wanted to bring him on maybe uh, in week three or four and he's off the board week one. And I was just shocked. I didn't think it was going to get there, but good for him. I think it's a great fit. I think I even mentioned him as an eight ball 
um, target in the, the free agency preview. So good fit there, but still very surprised. Yeah. Yeah. Duran, like a surprise at first when you think, you, you know, you look at his value and going in the first round, but then I really thought about it and it's like, is Mike speak has a type. Oh yeah. And it, does any player fit that type better than John Duran? I don't, it's like, of course, of course, yeah. senior uh, picks up Duran. Not surprising. They're both Chicago guys, both Bears fans. Um, yeah. it, it, from the day that John showed up at the dirt yard last year as a rookie and I got to show him around and show him the ropes, Mike was one of the first guys he met other than me and the rest of the actors. And they just, you know, were hanging out, talking on the side. And of course, Mike is always showing him different grips and stuff. So yeah. he's got the juice and I think John's going to pay off. I'm not looking forward to potentially having to see his fastball yeah. Uh, that, that will be no bueno. Yeah, Speak's going to look like a genius if that pick oh, um, sure. stands out. For sure. Okay, well, now that we're talking about flamethrowers and arms, what do you think, uh, which team through uh, their third player added to the roster now has the best arsenal of arms at this point? Yeah, for, for me, this has to be the Pork Pistols. When you talk about the duo of uh, Reed and the Grunt Punt, it's like, man, that pair of flamethrowers, um, get Olivia Rodrigo on the phone because it's going to be brutal out here for hitters <laughs> going up against oh <laughs> the pistol. Uh, yeah, I, I dread the day where I'm going to have to go two games, one against Reed and one against Punt. That's that's mm -hmm. going to be tough. Yeah, for sure. And who knows, maybe, maybe Thomas can even get in there and throw some relief innings. And sure. it's all – honestly, I've said this before – in other pods, punt adding his knuckle curve and not being all gas, no break made him yeah. a better, it made him more effective. Yeah. Um, I think that's a great pick uh, for best uh, grouping of arms so far. Two, so two out of their three players can throw. Mm -hmm. um, I, I'm going to go, I like that one. I'm going to go with the reigning Cy Young though. Um, and with a little bit of upside, hoping that Dustin Dowden has a bounce back year because he was great in 2020 with the Yackers. Truly, he, he was a quick learner. He pitched in college. I took him under my wing, showed him some stuff, and he like even created some of his own pitches. And then he tore his labrum in the fall of uh, 2020. So um, I'm taking the hounds there with Sprink. Got a great two pitch mix with the, the slider and the two seam uh, uh, action on his fastball. Um, I think that's going to be right now the pick to click because we know that Sprink is going to be on the board. Right. You can't always guarantee that Reed will be. Yeah. I think the ceiling is much higher for the Pistol. The consistency of, of greatness is probably higher for the Hounds right now. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing with, with Pork is that those two guys, mm -hmm. yeah, the, the, nobody has a higher ceiling than that tandem. But yeah, our, We've seen it, you know, year in, year out, right? If, if Reed's on the board, he's unhittable. Mm -hmm. um, but if you can force him into those lob ball counts, you can maybe get to him. Yep. But yeah, I, I've i never seen Dustin Dowden pitch in CC Pro. Um, I wasn't well, you kind of have. You kind of have. He just he, he goes by a different name. Yeah, yeah. I, I've seen his, his twin pitch. But that's yeah, true. right. It's like looking in a mirror. Right. Oh, that's a bad joke. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, Dowden twins. Um Okay, so how about this? Now we're talking pitching. We won't talk about defense, but we'll just go at the plate on the rubber. Wh which which team do you think has the best offensive weapons thus far? Yeah, this one's tough. I think it's – there's a few contenders here. Um, I think that uh, – I'm, I'm not picking the shorts, but I think the shorts bear keeping in mind. Um, of course, Dudas is like such a powerhouse, and then we know Aiden can hit. We know that Florida's good with the bat too. Um, I laid it with the moonshots here, though, like that, you know, e even just the beginning duo, right, of um, Smithy and Gregory is like just such a one-two punch. And then you add Blake to the mix, who's got some speed and can get on base um, for those two power hitters, right? Um, that's looking like a really, really good start to a lineup. Um, so yeah, I think they're, they're going to be dangerous for any pitcher to go up against this year just with those three. Oh, for sure. That And Blake, being the selfless manager that he was last year, he often pulled himself out of lineups just to turn yeah. it over for the thumpers. 
And he's not really going to have that option this year, especially with lineups being minimum of four batters. He's definitely going to be in that top four. He's either going to be in the leadoff spot, which is probably going to be Smithy, so he can be his own leadoff man. But he could be there. Um, or you put him at the four hole, and he just turns the lineup over and is like a second uh, second leadoff guy. Um, yeah, yeah, great great fit. Of course, like you expect that he's going to return yeah. to the mood shots from the – you know, the name alone, but even, you know, when you put that aside, his skill set really does complement mm-hmm. um, what they've got already really well. I, I had thoughts uh, about reaching out to Blake, but before I even had a chance to reach out, I heard, oh, it's just going to be a moonshot reunion. So like, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Not worth it. Great teammate. Great CCW OG too. Yeah. Um, my, my answer to this question offensive weapons and it, it's kind of showing a trend and where maybe uh, our power rankings are going to lie but the pistols again the yeah. pork boys they uh they read and punt they both pitch and hit they both can be two ways and uh, i think reed really came on as a hitter last year and he, he was no slouch before um but you have both uh ironically both tp and reed throw right bat left um, and I think having a plethora of lefties in your lineup, you're, you're more likely to get a rollover hit to the first baseline side than you are to the left base or left base, third base side. Yeah. Um, and then you've got the short porch and in, in right and then Doyle's tree hanging over the field. So you just got some boppers that can aim for some leaves on that tree and turn uh, an, a can of corn fly ball into uh, a grand slam and really You're in danger of starting controversy by mentioning the leaves here yes <laughs> be careful uh we need, to, we need to trim that tree i tell you what <laughs> yeah uh, last year i think um the you know I, in the season saw the glimpses of reed at the plate right but um he was the all-star game mvp right he like put on a show yeah. for yeah um, our pink team in that game i think he hit either two or three home <laughs> runs um so it's like shoot man yeah you're right if he taps into that potential with you know his dominance on the mound too that's like an mvp caliber player right there sure yeah he's just been trending upward he he was a uh, he and i came in we had the same rookie year in 2017 uh and he got rookie of the year and uh, we were on the same team actually oh wow and then i got traded uh, mid-season uh in in the uh, the dark ages of ccw before we actually had uh the amerifence put up and everything so um he's just trended upward ever since and he's got that that rookie of the year on his mantle but he hasn't i think gotten a sigh or an mvp yet so maybe it's all gonna work its way in that direction so um well with those both in mind why don't we power rank the, the six teams, and I'll, I'll give a, a rundown again, uh, just for clarity's sake for our listeners. It's the Moonshots have uh, Smithy as the manager, Gregory as duo pick, and Boris. Uh, myself with the Yackers have Luker, Kate Luker as my duo partner, and then uh, the man with me on this podcast is our third so far. And then Short Shorts, Commissioner Dudas as the manager. Uh, Aiden Palmer, Michael Plord, Hounds, Dylan Jones, uh, Sprinkle, and Dustin Dowden. Pistols have Thomas Hopkins, Warner, and Punt, and the Eight Balls have Mike Speak Sr., Taylor Carpenter, and John Duran. So how do you rank those one through six? Yeah, you want me to go top down here? You tell me. You tell me. And I'll go in the reverse of what you choose. Okay. Uh, I'll start. I'll start at number one and work my way down. Okay. So I think the the clear clubhouse leader right now, especially coming off our conversations, is the Pork Pistols with their uh, their ceiling is so high. They've got a chance to like just completely shut you out every game with who they can throw out there on the mound, and then between you know Hop, who we know is a great hitter, and the upside that Reed and, and TP have at the plate too. It's like yeah, great building blocks um, for a team here, and they're only going to get better. Yep. Um, Number two, I've got the Hounds. I think, you know, we've talked about this today too, but really balanced team here between um, DJ, who's going to be a thumper in the middle of your lineup, Sprink, who's, you know, the reigning Cy Young, and Dustin, who's great two ways. They've got their 
bases covered really well here, um, already filling up the holes um, in their roster. Next, I would go Moonshots. Again, we've talked about them, but yeah, that that offense um, has the potential to be tops in the league. Um, and if they can add another solid second arm to slot in there be- um, behind Smithy, I think that they've got, you know, the looks of of jumping up in the power rankings even. Yeah. After that, I would go with our Yakkers. Um, I think, yeah, the thing at this juncture that we're missing is that um, that lockdown top of the rotation arm. Mm-hmm. Um, I think our, our lineup is looking really good between your, yourself, Kate and I. We need somebody to get on base um, and to play the field, you know, Neither Cade nor I would uh, claim to have the best wheels you know, in CCW. So there's an area we're lacking. Okay. Um, fifth, I'm going to say the short shorts. I think that this is a, still such an interesting team for me. Like with that pick of Plord, they're still like, you know, we know the deal with Aiden, right? When he's on, he's untouchable, but he has the potential to not be on. You've got Plord who can pitch behind him and Dudas who's, you know, perennially one of the best offensive players in the league and I was thinking about this too just now like when you've got Aiden on the on the mound and Dudas and Plord in the field that's about like as solid as the defensive line can put together Mm -hmm. right like nothing's hitting the ground um so even though they're fifth on the rankings here I think if they get some savvy ads here in the rest of free agency they could really shoot up Mm -hmm. um, and they've got a lot of potential so right now that that would leave the eight balls in the sixth spot for me, but similarly, like super high ceiling here, right? I think that um, Taylor Carpenter is, um, even though he is like well known and well respected, still I think one of the most underrated players in the league, yeah. right? Like I love watching that dude play, um, such a like smooth swing, and he, you know, once you've got the pitcher smooth whisper, but or, say that again, smooth but violent, like, yeah, he gives me whiplash when he's swinging that thing. <laughs> Like I know he, he kind of models his game after Ken Griffey Jr. He's a huge yeah. Ken Griffey Jr. fan, and he's kind of got it down, honestly. Yeah, he the does. Swag, the the cool, everything about him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, another team that's got a ton of ceiling, especially if the pitcher whisperer can get to Taylor mm-hmm. and to John. Um, so that that's the thing about, like, these teams and the free agency format we're putting together is, like, it's got the looks of being um, – pretty balanced in a wide open field, which is exciting. So um, the, the distance yeah. between first and sixth is so minimal. Like, yeah, just because you have the eight balls last, that doesn't necessarily mean anything. Like the, the ceiling is still there, but they, they have to do the work in order to move up. And I, I hate, cause we've, we've done this for the last four years with these preview shows and everything heading into the season is, Oh, the eight balls are done. We're gonna, you know, take them yeah. out behind the shed. They're they're shot, and then they end up in the dirt or classic. And yeah. so it's like kiss of death. I feel putting them in the bottom. <laughs> it's like, oh well, they're gonna have the best record in the league now. But again, this is only three players into a seven-player roster, so a lot to be figured out. Uh, I'll go in reverse order of what you did, um, just for funsies, and uh, I'll start with. I flip-flopped five and six. We were pretty similar. We had a couple of flips. Um, I love the point you made about the defensive setup between Plord and Dudas because I think in that scenario, you pretty much have one A and one B, and Dudas is still going to play left side. Um, And I honestly think Plord's game is probably better suited for playing in center or at least on the right side. Um, he can range a little. yeah he can use his length and his range a little bit more and not have to worry about ground balls as much um and maybe in home run scenarios like if it's a slow pitch you still put the long arms of floored at the warning track to knock things down yeah. uh, so that's huge great point but i do have them sixth as of right now and i know dudas wrote an article recently placing his own team in last talking about what the definition of insanity is and i won't go into those details um you can read it for yourself on the ccw website uh, fifth i had the eight balls um all the reasons you mentioned uh, i think those those two teams are very close but again really all these teams are close um i feel sick 
saying this because they still have the core. It's just minus read, but I have the moonshots in fourth. And that's probably, I, I weighted pitching pretty heavily in my ranking. So it's like, who would I trust more in a, to win a, to sweep a series, a two game series with their pitching yeah. and the moonshots like, yeah, they, they could win one game, but they're just going to have to out hit you in game two, whoever their, their second guy is. Um, yeah, and we, we, we keep saying too, it's a moonshots reunion, but they're not, it's minus a huge piece, which is. Oh really- yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And then I, I put uh, the Ackers in third right now. Um, I like, I like the offensive mix of two righties and a lefty. Um, I've seen Cade throw actually, he can, he can throw, but yeah, he'd, he'd probably be a, a garbage time pitcher, uh, but between myself and you handling the load, like that's still pretty good. And um, I think there's at least we have two trusted arms that can go on the bump for two games, like I was saying. Uh, Hounds, I have number two, even though I picked them to have the best pitching. I think they have significantly less pop right now than the Port Pistols, which is who I have at number one. And again, if we both had them in our top two in offensive and pitching categories that probably means they're number one so uh, pretty obvious I think right now and we'll see how the rest of free agency unfolds but Mm -hmm. any any last second thoughts before we wrap up this episode of Dirty Yard just be careful calling my arm trusted when I'm sitting with like a career 37 ER ERA I see you mostly oh please yeah, that, that was a that was a brutal showing. I know the wind was blowing out that day. It's kind of funny because your first career game was in that 40 degree night yep. uh, on like a Wednesday. And then three days later, it was 75 and gorgeous. Yeah. And the the Yackers went to town on your curveball. Yeah. Uh, but like you're one of the few guys that has four or five pitches that you can throw. Um, just a matter of picking spots and obviously now it's becoming a velo league so right right you'll get there i trust it yeah man That's your trusted arm so uh as we do wrap up this episode i know it's uh we're looking forward to week two of free agency which is underway as of the airing of this episode and since we already announced one signing for the Yackers as the manager i feel like i can give myself permission to announce the second signing for the Yackers right here so adding to myself, Cade Luker, and Alex Gerchiff on the Akers roster, we have acquired left-handed pitcher Mitch Bias. So welcome aboard the herd, my friend Mitch. Uh, we're the fourth Yak to join the herd, and we're excited to add so many more uh, to our crew. We've got two more uh, veteran free agents to add, along with a rookie that all teams will draft in their seventh roster spot come the month of May leading up to the season on June 5th. And uh, with free agency week two now underway, we'll just keep seeing the free agents roll in. Be sure to keep an eye on Dirt Yard Dish on Twitter, uh, CCW on Facebook. They will be rolling through threads of all the updates of who gets signed and the remaining cap space left. Uh, and then once we get to the end of February, we'll have our veterans locked in. And uh, we'll just kind of sit and wait, scout some rookies, and move on from there. So uh, any last words you want to give as we salute the Dirt Yard Dish fans into uh, the second week of free agency? I don't think so. Yeah, psyched right. that Mitch is on the squad, too. I, yeah, I, I love this this starting four here for us. I think this yes. is the makings of a really good a really good team. Absolutely. All vibes squad. Here we go. Yeah, All Chris- vibes. Vibes 2022. All right. For Alex Gerchiff. I am Rudy Lyon, Deputy Commissioner of CCW. We'll see you on the next episode of Dirt Yard Dish. I can't wait to get back on the road again. Am I back again? Dude, like throw the back Back home again. Back home again. In. 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 Land.